Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and today I'm doing two Halloween theme tags. Both of these were created last year by the Locked Petition for last year's Black Halloween, which is happening again this year. The first one is going to be the Hocus Pocus book tag created after the movie. And the first question is, what book would you consider to be a sweet tooth, meaning a book you can't get enough of? And for me, I decided to pick the Snow White with the Red Hair series because this is one that I am always happy to pick up and every new book I'm so excited for and I like re-watching the anime version and rereading it and just the characters are so sweet and wholesome and the themes of doing small things well and that being important is like really special to me. Then name a series or single book that has magic, vampires, and werewolves. And one that I really enjoy is Alatsue. The werewolves have a very small part, but they are in it, and there is also magic and vampires. I picked it up for the ace representation, but it also has indigenous representation and its own voices for both of those things, I believe. This cloak is so hot. We're gonna, we're gonna take that off. <laughs> Next, a book with two magical sisters. And I assume you can pick a book with more than two magical sisters, um, but I of course have to mention A Song Below Water, which is found family sisters, and I I love that book so much, um, and it just like immediately leaps, immediately leaps out because of the whole duo aspect, but also Love Sugar Magic is a trilogy, and it has a whole magical family, which includes maybe five sisters total, the main character plus her four sisters, and they like tend to work in pairs. I think the other four sisters are paired up and have like similar powers to each other or like um, work together a lot. Or maybe she has two sisters and two cousins. There's a lot of big family stuff going on and it's a really sweet book series that is all about family and friendship and <sighs> culture and responsibility. It's a lovely middle grade story and I thought that each book was better than the last so like that's really nice when a series works that way. What is your favorite fictional theater? What is your favorite fictional character to dress up as for Halloween? And I did a few um, Halloween costumes where I actually went out and like went to um, what were they called? Trunk trunk or treats um, at various churches and my favorite one was when I dressed as Arwen. I got a purple dress and a silver cape thing and I loved it so much. My brother that year dressed up as Frodo so we were like matching and <laughs> I love the photos from that and she was one of my favorite favorite characters of all time for a lot of my childhood um, and nowadays I prefer any type of witch like obviously I got the hat I love dresses that kind of evoke that it's a little bit like cottage core but different like goth cottage core or goth lolita that's another similar similar vein but like I like specific varieties like doing a flower witch one time and a uh, moon and stars witch one time, that kind of thing. That really does it for me. Have you watched Hocus Pocus? Have you watched Hocus Pocus and what were your thoughts? I didn't watch it when I was a kid. I only watched it once I became an adult. I really didn't watch any scary movies when I was a kid because my parents didn't like them and I mostly watched what my parents liked or what was on kids TV on Saturday mornings. So I watched, I've now watched it all at once and I liked some of it like I really like the cat although fake animals creep me out um like the ones from George of the Jungle I still can't watch that movie I recently found out because the fake gorillas horrify me yeah so um so the cat was creepy despite cats usually being my favorite thing and um I prefer witches to be the good guys it was it was quite creepy to me even as an, as an adult um, and the, the mouth shown, sewn shut thing. I hate that. I also have a particular problem with hangings. They freak me out more than other types of fictional death. Um, so yeah, <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun and it is really helpful to like, I understand references now, but not my favorite Halloween movie. 
Uh, my favorite Halloween movie is Practical Magic, by the way. That's my type of thing. And I kind of like the dynamics of the three sisters. That was a fun time. Now, if you could be any famous cat, which would you choose? And he's not that famous, but I really love Faithful from Tamora Pierce's series. Uh, specifically, Song of the Linus. He's my one of my favorite fictional cats. Um, very much involved in the plot and has like magic and is a black cat, which I always love. And I just really like it when animals are a like significant part of the story like that, but are still also treated as pets to a certain extent. <laughs> Who is your favorite fictional warlock of all time? And not a lot of stories use the word specifically warlock, so I just went with a dude magic user. And for me, my absolute favorite is Numair, also created by Tamora Pierce. I haven't read the new series about him, so I might not like that version of him, but the version of him that is in Dane's series, like Wild Magic or something, I really, really like. He's a soft boy, but also a badass. <laughs> then uh, another of the tags that Locked Booktition created in the same video is called the Spiderweb Book Tag. And I hate actual spider webs like touching me or anything, but I like looking at them. So name a book that has a spooky cover. And I think that Freaks Likes Us, which um, if I am too lazy to get the screenshot of, is a red background with black cracks in it with an upside down school bus and that's very small and has cracks in the words freaks like us and it is a scary book that is about um child predators and stigma against mental illnesses it's a very creepy book it's very atmospheric a lot of the creepiness has to do with the way the um author builds the atmosphere so that's quite cool then do you prefer reading in the dark or in the morning and why and i enjoy a good sit down in the afternoon to read but a lot of reading gets done at night before I go to bed with my Kindle because that that has the least light on it instead of a lamp lighting up a regular book there's a lot less light so it helps me helps my brain realize that it's time to sleep now and also my my brain is kind of better at imagining and shutting out the real world at night so it kind of helps things to be more vivid and to like spark my imagination more Name a book with more twists and turns than you can count. And I had to pick uh, Nine Fox Gambit, which I'm sure extends to the rest of the series as well, um, because it's the first of a trilogy, and it is all about spies and traitors and military leaders and corrupt regimes, and you have no idea who's lying or if, like, people may have seemed to prove themselves but like are they actually just playing a long game and are going to turn on you in the end now name a character that was affected or died from a potion or poisonous bite which i actually had surprisingly few books that i could answer that with but in ancient mages bride which is another manga i don't know if it's a bite specifically but like the main character is affected by this guy who has like darkness and evil powers and he like scratches her or touches her and it has a major effect on her magic and also on his magic and like corruption and stuff is like big theme of that story so like that's the one that I picked. Name a book that included a non-malicious spider and there are a lot of spiders in uh, Akata Warrior, there's even one on the cover. And I'm pretty sure that at least one of the spiders was non-malicious, if not a fair number of them. They scared the main character, and I don't think any of them are actually out to hurt her. I think they're just living there. When you think of spiders, what is the first book that comes to your mind? Lord of the Rings, um, because of Shelob, obviously. Yeah, that's the biggest featuring of a spider in a book that I can think of. Because they didn't have any spiders in Del Toro series, they did have a big snake. But I don't think ever a spider. Yeah, fortunately for me, most of the books that I read don't have spiders in them as a main part. Uh, spell out spider with book titles that you own. I'm going to try this with my bookshelves. Um, I do have other bookshelves, but where's the S? Small Wonders is right there. 
uh, spider. Pa, 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 pa. Persuasion is right there, as is Pride and Prejudice. Uh, spider. I need an eye. Anything to start with that? The Inklings. D. Oh, obviously Ink Heart and all these other ones also start with an I. Should have noticed that. Uh, where's the D? Uh, Del Toro Quest. Spider with an E. Elatso A. Uh, and an R. Radiance. That wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Name a Stephen King books that scares or will scare you. And I don't want to read any Stephen King books because I know they'll all scare me or just creep me out or gross me out. Uh, but the one that scares me the most, the idea of, is It, the one with Pennywise, because I hate clowns. I hate creepy clowns. Nice clowns are fine, but they've kind of been ruined by the whole creepy clown trope. So, yeah. But I knew, <laughs> when I was a kid, I knew a real life clown who his whole thing was he went around and performed as a clown, and he was a very nice man. He was my third and fourth grade Sunday school teacher. <laughs> and his show name was Big Top. So those are my two spooky tags. Thank you so much for watching. I tag anyone who would enjoy doing this, and I will be seeing you in the next video. Bye.